Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 5, and you probably know where we are. We are over at the Community Dig site, and things have slowed down a little bit around here, that's for sure. However, Mr. Good Times of Scar has been plugging away. What is this right here in the middle? My goodness me, doesn't that look insane? I believe, I believe that all of that stone we're looking at is like a placeholder for what's to come. This is going to be the base of a giant tree, I believe. You can see some of the roots going down into the ground. And if you look very carefully, there's kind of a spiral staircase that goes all the way around the tree. Get out of here, spider. That guy got wrecked, didn't he? Uh, let's put on my elytra. I've hardly used this thing this season. We went and got one very early on. And for the last few episodes, I've done very little flying. And I wanted to see what it was like to fly around this room. Now, considering it isn't fully dug out, this is actually kind of easy to fly around, I say, as I hit the roof. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you can get a good shot of the tree on my right there. Wow, this is going to be an absolutely amazing project. And I cannot wait to set up my shop. If I haven't mentioned it to you already in a video, uh, the plan is for me to sell storage systems to other hermits. And I'll probably end up selling some skulls as well, because we've been collecting them. And we're going to get some in this episode as well. Uh, however, I'm here to pinch my beacon back again. Uh, there are three of them, or three others in this area, so it should be fine to borrow this for a while. In the last episode, we got Johnny the Vindicator back to our base, so I probably don't need to explain what it is we're going to do this episode. Of course, though, I'm going to need a beacon, and I'm going to need to finish doing some digging. Skeleton, get wrecked. I'm dodging your shots. You're on fire. And see you later. <laughs> that was easy. So this episode, I wanted to do a time-lapse chat. Obviously, it's a time-lapse. Here's some digging that I did earlier, but there's no music. You and I, my friend, are going to have a little talk. I just wanted to talk about a video that should have been released yesterday, fingers crossed, if all has gone to plan, uh, here on the channel called More Mob Heads. And obviously, if you've been following the series, you would have seen that more mobs than the regular vanilla game drop their own heads, and this is thanks to loot tables. And so yesterday, I made the video releasing that to the public. What I wanted to ask all of you is if you can think of any other mob heads you would think should be in the vanilla game. I've been rattling my brain trying to cover all the mobs, and I think I've got a list of all the other ones I need to fill in the gaps, but I'd like to hand it over to you. And also, if you haven't been to assumeavoid.com, I'd highly recommend you go over there and check it out. I actually learned how to do some programming or coding on the website and I was tidying things up, I was changing playlists and I actually made the More Mob Heads page myself. I'm really proud of it. Mostly I was copying pasting from other parts of the website and then changing things around. But it was a lot of fun and if you go and check out the More Mob Heads page you can see that I've listed the drop rates of every single mob and this is geared around the idea that when you go to um, you know, take down one of these mobs to get a mob head that you should probably be farming it because we're technical players here on Hermitcraft. We do a lot of farming and if these drop rates weren't low, everyone would have stacks upon stacks of these things. So that's the reason I've done that. But if you have any feedback, anything you think should be different, then feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know your reasoning. But yes, go check out that video. Go check out the website as well. And let's get back into it now. I think I'm, I think I'm done with my little time lapse chat for today. So we have a bat farm down here. I haven't finished doing my digging yet, but I come down here and there are loads of them. I'm going to let you count. I'm going to let you pause the video and count. There's probably, look, there's some over there. Are there any behind me? That's crazy. That's crazy. Guess what? These guys drop heads as well. They're also a pain in the butt to, uh, come on, there's, they're like right in front of you and they're very difficult to hit. Come on now. Oh, you're making me look like a newbie. Right, so they're one hit kill, which is a good thing. Hi. Oh, this is going to take me a while, basically. Alright, those two are sitting. I'm going to jump and slap. <laughs> and uh, it died up there. I have to go over there to see if it dropped ahead, I guess. I think the bat has like a 10% chance of dropping. If I'd have known you could find them in these quantities, though, I might have lowered that a little bit. There you go, another one. This cautious way is the way to do it, I reckon. Bam. Oh. <laughs> Except you actually got to hit them. Okay, there's another one down. 10% chance, remember, there's loads of them sitting in this little area. They're like right in front of me and I can't hit them. There we go. Another one. You, and you, and you. You're not getting out of here. Come on now, drop your heads. Nothing, nothing so far. Hey, there we go, we got one. 
Nice. Now, at the moment, I wouldn't say that looks terribly like the bat. It might actually be the same texture. The bat looks a little bit more brown to me. This one is subject to change, peeps, but it's another one that we got. And I could probably pick up a couple more, couldn't I? I don't know how long I'll tolerate doing this for. It didn't take me very long to get that one. It's just that they're a bit of a pain in the butt. Look at them. Ah, there you go. Diamonds! Yay! We're going to silk touch these. I try and silk touch all the diamonds I get now because we kind of don't need any more, right? So if I silk touch them, we can use them for aesthetics. I was about to start mining that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just got this little plateau right here to do and you can see the bats are still spawning like crazy. And it made me think, now that we're removing all of this, the sunlight is going to go down here and the bats ain't going to be able to spawn. But while we're working in the area, why don't we do an experiment and I think I know why they might be spawning so frequently down here actually. It might have something to do with the amount of blocks that are above it. The spawn rates are going to be faster. But anyway, I was thinking, why don't we carve out a section on the side here and go back so it's dark enough for the mobs to spawn. We'll, we'll widen this. And then if the bats spawn, they're in a nice low area, meaning we can walk into here and just slice them down. Uh, by the way, I got two bat heads so far. And so we'll play around with this a little bit. It's not the focus of this episode. I'm getting kind of distracted, aren't I? Yeah, but we'll definitely play around with that. Today is my lucky day, I tell you. I can't believe it. Came over here to repair my tools. They're all nice and shiny again now. And check it out. In here, the server's being laggy at the moment. <laughs> yeah, these guys are experiencing it as well. We got an Enderman head. So I came over here. I cleared out the Ender Pearls like I always do. And uh, we got one of these suckers. Check me out now. I'll be teleporting on ya. <laughs> uh, they say that things come in freeze. The last time I was here, I accidentally threw this into the void and did three derps in a row. Can you believe it? There were some other things that derped as well. Wow, that chest is still open. Get wrecked, Enderman. Uh, so we got two skulls already. I reckon we'll have a third one by the end of this video. <laughs> oh. Or how about right now? Hi! <laughs> Headed over to where the pink sheep were. Wow, these guys like pushing me about, don't they? Yep, bred them up some more. Did the business, got the pink sheep's head. Not going to focus on what colour we're going to go for next today. We'll do that in the future. I was just thinking about the bat's head. We got a couple of those so far. We now got this one as well, which I'm going to go put on the wall. And I built like these little cave areas like I talked about down below. And I saw one or two bats spawning down there. It wasn't too efficient last time I was in the area. But since we've been over here for a while, let's head back down there and see how it's doing. So the bats, the enderman, and the pink sheep up on the board. We're keeping these in the order that we get them. It's looking real cool. And uh, what we're going to do right now is act like a madman and jump over the edge here. Put my wings on again. Woohoo! <laughs> and on the way down here, I don't see any bats. Okay, they look like they were spawning in those areas, so I went and plastered them with torches, as you can see. So there should be no dark spots. Now, at the moment, we can't really see anything down here. Also, the players that are online have changed, so the dynamics might be a little bit different. Aha! Did you see that? There's one over here. So when I press F3 and B, we get the hitbox, and it allows us to see inside there. Now, I think the bats can fly out of where these slabs are. But it keeps the light out as well, which means the whole place back there becomes like a giant spawn area for us to then run in and slap this guy. Now, don't make me look like a fool. He's starting to make me look like a fool. I've even got the hitbox thing on. Jeez, I'm terrible at this. Okay, now you're going to burn to death. There we go. Okay, this fella and this fella just flew out from that side over there. And I can see a third one is on the ceiling. That's a good sign that it's going to work. And it happened while we are over in that area. So perhaps if we were to go inside this one and wait at the back then, a few more would spawn. But I tell you what, that's not what we're actually here to do today. We've been messing about for too long. It's time we cracked on with building this farm. I haven't really settled on a design yet. I've got many things to consider. But it is going to be built here in the middle, and I was just thinking, that probably means the beacon needs to be moved. Oh, and look at that. When we stood on the other side, I think about three new bats spawned over here. So it works. Oh, there you go. You know, we're going to have to move all of those chests eventually as well. Me and my ideas, I thought it was such a good spot to put them. Right in the middle of where we're digging. <laughs> Whatever. 
So I've been thinking about various ways and I want to walk you through my train of thought here as we've gone from one thing to the next and if I've forgotten something to uh, grab here it's dirt and luckily we've got a stack right there. So originally I wanted to have a big open platform on the bottom and then I was thinking what we'll do is we'll run some rails in a line like this underneath, have minecarts that go back and forth with hoppers and pick up the items from up above. So the mushroom cows will fall down onto here and then Johnny will go around and kill them. Now it would be quite an expensive way of doing things and the problem really isn't that, it's Johnny himself doesn't have the longest range. When I was running through those tunnels with him, he'd lose interest after about 10 or 12 blocks away from me and of course this is a much larger area than that. So this right here probably isn't the way that we want to go. What we want to do is get all the cows to one spot where Johnny is. So then I started to think, well, what we'll do is have a flushing water system, okay? The water will will come out and I really wish I'd have left those blocks exactly where they were because now the water will flow over in that direction. So it could flow over like that and you know from one side all the way to the other of this area we can move the cows. Now the problem with that is that from going from one side all the way to the other is a little bit slow and by having a flushing system we're going to create a lot of lag as the water spreads and then it unspreads and then it spreads again and plus it will flow over the mycelium if it's night time it could turn some of it into dirt. So our very bottom area we're going to forget about that being a spawning platform. I think the best way to do this is to use water that's not going to flush. So something like this is going to push the mushroom cows a little bit further into the middle, right? And like we did with our skeleton farm, we can have the water simply drop down and then flow in even further. So I reckon we're literally going to look at something like this, having water streams in each corner, all leading to a central area where Johnny will be. So this is a portion of it right here. There is water on these two sides. And I believe when we remove these blocks, it's going to flow out at just about four. And I think this might be a little bit too big here in the middle. Uh, if we fill in the gaps, though, we'll be able to find out soon enough. And this is like our basin for collecting the mobs from the farms up above. So we need to consider the Y height. Over here, it's as much as nine, I think. So that gives us another seven blocks to work with above here before we go into the next sub chunk. Anyway... Um, if I, you haven't heard that stuff explained before and you don't know what I'm talking about, just just know that the lower down we are in the world, the faster things spawn. And that is up to 16 blocks for the first sub-chunk. Right, so this is mostly filled in. We can trim back a couple of these blocks here and see where the water flows out to. And look at that, it comes right to the edge there. So I actually calculated that correctly, which means that this space in the middle could be full of hoppers, which is why I brought some iron with me. Now, I've also brought some spruce fences as well, because here's my thinking. This is going to be the height down here that the mobs are then going to stand on, and they could try and escape back up here. But the mobs aren't very good at swimming against the water current, and I think most likely they're just always going to get pushed back down in, and Johnny will wreck them. Now, Johnny himself will struggle to escape, and if some of the drops land up here, then they will simply fall back down. My other idea was to perhaps replace this with fence posts, but then you're going to need like an extra hopper over the edge here. So we'd use more hoppers in total, and when the mob flows over it like this, it won't block them, but it will stop them getting out again. Although if they try, they'll swim into the water, won't they? So it seems like that's a pretty pointless idea. We're not going to go with that one. Uh, another thing I want to show you before I finish building the rest of this basin, the bats, you can hear them squeaking, you can see them in the area. This bat farm thing really does work. A moment ago, there were loads of them over on one side. Check it out. It is totally working, and I've been slicing them every now and then. My skills are getting a little bit better, if you want to call them skills. But no more mob heads at the moment, and it looks like they're hanging out under here as well. Look at that. It's looking pretty good. And the cool thing about this is we can just drop down. <laughs> oh, I do like that. And what we want to do now is put some carpets on these hoppers. The hoppers lead out in that direction. Might be something I want to change in the future. And if I do, it's going to be a bit of a pain of a, in the butt because we're going to have Johnny over here. Although, now that I think about it, it'll probably be quite easy to remove some of this water, lure him over towards you, and then trap him in the area while you do some renovations. So, that shouldn't be a problem. And we're going to put down some carpet. Red for the mushroom, of course. Maybe also red for blood because this is the slaughtering area. Whatever way you want to look at it. Um, I think it's pretty cool. And we haven't really like done anything else aesthetically here 
um, other than just put down the stone which looks clean and since it's under the water I think the only blocks that I might come back and change would be these ones at the edge and maybe the walls we're going to decorate in the future as well um, but this is it it's kind of ready for the next step which I think is to get Johnny the Vindicator down here however I need to tidy up a few things first of all um, because it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to come down here when all these things are in this area with Johnny so we need Johnny to walk the plank so to speak and I think this is quite simple Johnny falls down there into the water then all is good I'm actually going to extend this out a little bit further a little bit worried about him going off to the side in fact I'm quite worried now that I look down there we want Johnny to fall off in this little space I think yes and then all should be good so I've got a boat with me and I've got a little bit of an idea we need to take this off because it's got fawns on and what we're going to do is get Johnny in the boat first of all. Hi. Oh, jeez, that did not place. And that guy hits hard. And actually, it did place. But the boat is invisible. And now we've got a Vindicator running around our base with us. Well, that's just great, isn't it? Um, okay, I guess plan two. Where did Johnny go? Oh, I hear you, Johnny. What's going on? Where? <laughs> we've lost him. Oh, hi. Ow. Ow. He, he does hit very hard. Okay, so Johnny be following. Johnny's going to follow me down here, right? And then I'm going to throw an ender pearl over there. And then I'm going to jump. Okay, so we've got him locked inside that little area. What happened to the boat? It didn't place. I thought it left my inventory. As soon as as soon as soon something happens, I just go into a panic, don't I? <laughs> Basically. All right, Johnny. So now you're in the boat. Excellent. Now, this next experiment is to find out what happens when I'm in the boat with Johnny. That's... Okay, that's death number three right there. I can't complain. Oh, man, that guy hits really hard. Oh. Well, that was kind of hairy. Got all of my items back, though. I've just been standing on the edge here and uh, thinking about it. I think we're like two or three blocks in from the edge. That's how many blocks this is. And I think here we're above the water and there we're above the stone. What I'm saying is this thing should probably come out a little bit further like that just to be safe better safe than sorry as they say in fact we might be a little bit close to that side as well how about we go around the corner like that as well right let's finally get this sorted out and get this guy out of here the first thing we've got to do is break that boat it's going to be kind of tricky nope do I oh I have to go down there don't I I have to go down there with him Oh my goodness me, this is going to be hairy. Okay, so I want that right next to my pick. And... Nope, nope, not good enough. Okay, he could kill me a second time. That's very possibly a thing. So we need to do the same little trick again. I don't know where he is. He's right there. Come on, follow me. Down into the hole. Jeez, he's above me. Okay, now I've got to throw an ender pearl. And then I've got to drop down here. Right. <laughs> Let's get back over there. Is he okay? Can I see him from up here? Did he follow me off the edge? Maybe he followed me off the edge. No, he's still there. If I can creep up on Johnny, this will be nice and easy. And this is what we should have done the first time. Could have avoided that third death. We need to make a memento for that. And that is going to be in my way. And so is that actually, if Johnny's down there. He is down there. And luckily I did all that just in time. Okay, so I think I want to go in here as well. And just do the water like that. And then that's going to flow over the edge. Go around the corner, buddy. Off you go. And Oh, no, no. He's still here. How is he? How is he not gone down? Go down, Johnny. Go down already. Where are you? Let's have a look. You're swimming in the water. That's crazy. He was showing off his skills for a second there. Excellent. We've got Johnny down to the bottom. That was absolute madness right there. Oh, cool. All right. Let's fall down. So, any of the cows, like myself, pretending to be a cow, will just slowly get pushed over to Johnny. Johnny will kill you. Take care of business. All the drops will end up on those carpets. Yes, it's going to be a great design, isn't it? Right, now we've got to start building the farm above Johnny. So, we're going to have three sets of platforms at these heights. There are two blocks in between, and this top one right here is at Y15. Now, earlier I said 16. I can't help but feel that then the mob is spawning on top of that and so it goes into the next sub chunk. I'll have to verify that. 
Uh, but unfortunately, building it here means that there'll only be one platform at the bottom. If we could build it higher up, then we could squeeze in a few more. But the deal is, as we go outwards, the water gets higher up, so there's going to be less platforms in the corner. And all of that will kind of make sense as we go along. So I'm going to build some platforms, then I'm going to show you how they're going to work. So I've set up a little tree farming area over there, been collecting some wood because we need to craft tons and tons of wooden trapdoors. That's how this farm's going to work. And if we look down there, you can see some bats flying out of the side. You can also see the layout, and it doesn't look like there's a lot of spawning spaces here. And the truth is, there isn't. And we can always make adjustments to this design. But I'll show you why there's a lot less than you might suspect when we get a little bit closer. And by the way, when it comes to making adjustments, it'll probably be a while because we've got a lot of conditioning to do to make this stuff work. So... Let's grab our trapdoors. The trick here is that we've got little 3x3 free free spawning platforms and a mushroom will see this right here with its pathfinding. I can go from here over to there and it will wander over even if these are closed, which means it's going to fall down uh, into the water stream and go to the Vindicator. So these little pathways are temporary. We can now get rid of those, which I'll do in a moment. And that's basically the layout right there. So it's in a 3x3 free free because whatever direction it decides to wander into, it's going to go into those trapdoors. And what we could do to change this is to make it so, let's say, this strip going in this direction. We actually have black blocks of mycelium going all the way through. And that means if a mushroom were to go from, well, in the same direction, it would actually walk to where it's pathfinding to. Now, if it chooses to go across, then it would fall down the channel. So, in my mind, that way could be a little bit slower. Now, it looks like there's not going to be a lot of spawning space in total. Remember, this is low down, although we are working with passive mobs here, so they don't spawn as frequently. And it'll be a while before we'll be able to tell, but there are a few more things that we can do here. And as I mentioned earlier about the height of this thing being at 15, if it were one block higher then we would have an extra, I think, one, two, like eight in a circle around that bottom one. And because of that, it means that we have eight less spawning platforms. But it's no big deal. If you look below us, you can see that we have a full grid going on the, the floor below. And here's what I want to show you. There's another place where we could put spawning platforms as well. So we're going to have an edge like that. Then over here to trick the mushroom to walking across it. This might not actually work now that I think about it. You need two of these together to make it work effectively, but it could be because there's a block on the other side that they're walking to. So over here is where our wall is, and it's going to be like that. However, what we could actually do is make another spawning space right here with some mycelium. You can see that the uh, sky is still accessible above us, and we could have a little spawning platform that is, oh, is that all I've got? Well, <laughs> we could have another 3x3 free free hidden here in the wall and then something that comes across the side like that. I'm running out of trapdoors and I've also run out of wood. And it is a very sunny day outside today and I want to go for a walk. I want to enjoy that sunshine. But I also want to get this project finished as well. And considering that there's only a really a grind in front of us, which is to get the resources and place these blocks down, I think I'm going to call it that for now. I did come up with a pretty good technique for placing these things down, although I didn't really stick to it. But the quicker way to do things is to go across like this, placing them all nice and fast, and then getting yourself over onto that side and coming back across again, right? and then you place them at a reasonable pace. Now this thing was never going to be up and running today. I mean, well, it's technically running right now because our killing mechanism is there around the clock, but the spawn rates are going to be lousy until we condition the area we're in and we condition the spawn chunks as well. So we've made a considerable dent on this project. There's still a long way to go though. You know what? Leaving it like this isn't such a bad idea at all. It gives me something to do during a live stream. Now, a lot of my live streams have been over at the Community Dig area, and that's because I don't want to come over here because of spoilers and stuff, right? I'm always recording in this area, and it made me think, you know, is it really that big a deal? What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below, because there's probably only a small percent of you that actually come out to the live streams, maybe 5%. And you won't see everything that I do in the episode anyway, so it's only like a small portion of things actually getting spoiled. And as some say, or as I say, you could call it an exclusive preview. Let me know your thoughts, and then maybe we'll start live streaming over here a little bit more working on the base area. But anyway, 
As you probably can tell, that is it for me this episode. If you have enjoyed the episode, leave a like as always. Thank you ever so much for your wonderful support on this series. And I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.